I'm Dr. Randy Neal, and in this video, we're going to talk about what do you do when you hit that wall of, of studying and you're at a point where you've, you're not making your scores, uh, you've learned all the material, and you're just not able to take those assessment pieces and feel like you'd, you're ready to actually take the, uh, the step one or step two exam. And I can say that I've been there. Uh, you know, obviously, there's a lot of material to, to cover in these things. And when I first took that MBME, my score was absolutely so low that it was like, you know, obviously I'm doing something wrong. So there's a few things that I, that I did and that I'll, I'll share with you uh, that kind of got me out of that. And obviously I had a, I had a pretty good outcome. I uh, got into residency with a, with a pretty decent score. But to understand that this, this test, you know, this is really, it's not a competition versus you and somebody else. And I know a lot of times we like to, you know, people may, you know, not share material, but this test is really you versus you. It's a matter of how much work are you going to put in to get the result that you want. Uh, but it's also understand, and I'd say, you know, step number one technically is, you know, nobody's coming. You know, there's not a magical system. Or there's like a, not a magical way. There's not a magical cue bank or anything like that that's going to save you from putting in the work. So it's really to, just to say, you know, my score, um, I'm responsible for that. You know, I own that. And it's time, it's time for me to just kind of circle the wagons and, and reassess where I'm at and to, and to make a change. And that's something that I had to have that kind of a, a real <laughs> talk to myself and say, you know, hey, what I'm doing is not working and we need to kind of shift focus. But the, the moral of that point is, is to say that there's nothing, you know, there's not, nothing that's going to say, oh, once I get this information or once I get this book or, you know, all that kind of stuff that is going to really make a huge change. You know, we're trying to do these these YouTube videos to kind of simplify things some, but at the end of the day, you still got to put in the work yourself uh, to make sure that information kind of comes in in a meaningful way to where you can retrieve it, obviously later. The second point is to make sure that when you learn this stuff, is to learn it as though you're going to teach the next guy in line. And I can't stress that enough. Uh, you know, before you end your study session, before you go to sleep at night, is to you know look back and say, okay, the stuff that I learned today. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a video coming out on the, on the GI series, you know, once you see that, you know, could you take that information and teach it to somebody right now? Because that's the level that you have to really, you know, understand this is to say, could you actually teach it to a classroom without even looking at any notes? Um, it's to have that mindset that, that right now when I, when I put in my effort, it's going to be to such a level that you could actually make, you know, kind of teach someone else. And uh, it, it really makes a difference when you can do that. And honestly, that's really why we made the, the biostats videos was to, you know, I knew there was a, there had to be a simpler way of doing things. And, you know, math kind of came a little bit easier to me. So I knew that if I could get there and teach that stuff, that I knew that I could easily, you know, have an impact on my own exam. And, you know, that was essentially the beginning of, you know, of, of me doing the biostats. And I'd even challenge you to say, when you're going through this process, think of, say, when you get to the other side, when you pass step one, you get into residency, you get out of residency, you know, could you do a YouTube channel of actually how to teach somebody this material? And I'd say, if you, again, going in with that mindset can, can really make a difference. And it makes learning fun. It makes learning a, little, a lot easier as well. The number three strategy is to, is to really use that self-talk. Uh, I know that seems kind of odd and, and a little bit different, but, you know, sometimes when we feel defeated, uh, sometimes when we... You know, we're down on ourselves, you know, you're by yourself, you're done studying, you got your score, it's not what you wanted, is we really, you know, we're really hard on ourselves. I mean, probably sometimes a little bit too much. But it's to have that kind of inner voice and just kind of talk your way through this, saying, okay, yep, it's not what I wanted. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a great challenge for me. I look forward to it. And I think if I just, if, if I continue to put in the work, I'm going to see the results. But it's not being down on yourself, it's actually the opposite. It's like, man, you know, just love a great challenge. And understand that sometimes that struggle is meant is, is there for a purpose, it's there for a reason. Maybe it slows you down a little bit, but it, it puts you in the right position in the future. And as long as you, you maintain that belief, um, from my experience, you're, you're gonna be right put in the exact position that you need to be. But use that inner voice, use that uh, you know, as, as your own self kind of motivation per se. And the fourth step is mainly to say, to set yourself apart, you know, set the goals and just exceed them. You know, again, when I, when I was going through that, you know, I tell myself, all right, I'm going to do 50 new questions 
a night and then I'm going to re review my book of all the questions that I didn't understand that I wrote down and then when you set the goal of 50 you do 51 you know when you when you set your clock to wake up you know you, you wake up even before the alarm goes off and pretty soon that just becomes a routine because it's all about you know and how I like to you know motivate myself or motivate somebody else is that you know you really got to be different you know and and what I mean by that is you know when I was telling people yeah I, I woke up at 3 30 and it was nothing I, I didn't even need an alarm clock to do that um, they might look at you like you're strange but you know you, you become a different person going through this process and it's setting yourself apart from the pack because yeah we all have that that worry initially that you know there's all these people going for these these few spots in residency but when you start doing those little things in the, in the preparation stage, in the study phase, that you start believing that, yeah, I'm, I'm different than them. And, uh, you know, some of those rules don't apply to me. And you just start believing uh, that when I put in all this extra work, uh, the results do come. And also, you just have this inner belief that you're going to get into residency, you're going to get that spot, you're going to get the score that you wanted. Um, and it's all about just, just really setting yourself apart from everybody else. The way I see this exam is that there's 11 set, you know, there's, there's roughly 10 or 11 different topics. And if you got to start from scratch, start from the beginning, you know, use those strategies and learn it you're gonna, as you're going to teach it. Start with biostats, right? You watch the videos that we created. Um, you should have, be able to understand that one pretty, you know, pretty reasonably uh, with that. So, so you start with biostats and consider that a win. And then go to a hard topic. For me, it was pharmacology, right? So I'd stayed on farm until I, until I had it down, uh, till it had it down cold. And so I'd go from an easy topic to a hard one. And I look at, you know, biostats, musculoskeletal, behavioral health. Those are all this relatively simple. It's memorization stuff. Um, and then I'd, I'd kind of mix in the hard topics. And then I'd always review from scratch. So when I was done with farm, I went back to biostats, piece of cake, did my farm. And then I put in another easy one, behavioral health. Then I had three of the topics. And eventually I made my way up all, all the way to the 10 or 11, but I always reviewed um, and it really made it really made a difference. I mean, it just boosts your confidence um, and you can get the results that you want. So obviously, you know, this USMLE, this step one, step two, step three, this getting into residency, it's a long process and uh, it's difficult. There's no guarantees in any of it, um, but that that's what kind of wakes us up. It makes us feel alive, especially when you accomplish it. But it's, it's using those strategies, it's not quitting. Um, it's actually, you know, it's like when you start getting tired and you feel like you don't want to study anymore, uh, you know, that's when actually the, the studying should begin. And it's, that's what's going to set you apart from, from everybody else. So use these strategies, you know, believe, again, nobody's coming to help you. It's all, it's all on you. Use the, uh, you know, use that self-talk. Uh, make sure you, you teach it as though you're going to help the next guy. Um, in line and you know if you think of anything else leave it in the comments below I'm always interested in, in, in learning something myself and um, we're here to help